Today I've got a problem from Cambridge University's entrance exam step. We have the function f satisfies f of 0 is 0, f prime of t is bigger than 0, for t bigger than 0. Show by means of a sketch that if x is bigger than 0, the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt plus the integral from 0 to f of x of f inverse of y dy equals f uh, x times f of x. Part 1. The real function g is defined for all t by g of t cubed plus g of t is t. Prove that g of 0 is 0 and that g prime of t is positive for all t. Evaluate the integral from 0 to 2 of g of t dt. Part 2. The real function h is defined for all t by h of t cubed plus h of t equals t plus 2. Evaluate the integral from 0 to 8 of h of t dt. This is a really nice problem and can show you a really cool integral technique or integration technique, which maybe you haven't seen before. Let's start with the first bit. It's technically not part one, part zero, if you like, to show this result here. So we told that f of zero equals zero and f prime of t is positive for all t. And it tells us to draw a sketch here. So let's probably sketch this graph. So we know f of zero is zero, so it passes through the origin. And it's got a first derivative positive. So it's going to be an increasing function and a particular continuous as well. So maybe it looks something like that. I'll draw it maybe a bit smoother, something like this. Um, so this is going to be y equals f of t. So y equals f of t. This is my t-axis. This is my y-axis. Okay, and let's say x is somewhere here. And we're just going to draw a vertical line up there. And in fact, a horizontal line here. And what would this value be? Well, if that value is x, this would have to be f of x. And now conveniently, the area of this rectangle is x times f of x, which is that there. And so if we can show that the area of this rectangle equals two different integrals added together, we'll be in uh, a good position. And very clearly, we've got two different areas here. This bottom area is the integral from 0 to t, or 0 to x, sorry, of f of t dt. That gives us our first part. Now, how about this one here? This one's a little bit trickier. This is now an integral dy, because we're going up the y-axis from 0 to f of x. And what are we integrating? Well, normally we integrate y dx, but since we're going the other way now, it's going to be x dy, or in this case, I should say t dy. But what exactly is t? t is just that, if I rearrange this here, t is just f inverse of y. And so this thing here is just f inverse of y dy. And now you may ask, well, how do we know that an inverse exists? Well, that's because this function here is increasing. So since it's increasing, we know that an inverse exists because it's one to one. OK, great. So that proves this uh, equation here. Now let's move on to part one. So now for part one, of course, we want to use this result that we've got in part zero, this thing here. We've got this function g, which satisfies this. We first want to prove that g of zero is zero and g prime of t is positive. This is pretty straightforward to do. g of zero, well, let's just plug in t as zero into this equation. That seems like the obvious thing to do. We get g, g of 0 cubed plus g of 0 is 0. And if we factor out g of 0 from the left-hand side, we get this. And now since g of 0 is a real number, when you square it, it's going to be non-negative. So if you add 1, this thing here is going to be positive. So we get that g of 0 must be 0. Great. Now, why is g prime of t positive? Well, we're just going to use implicit uh, differentiation here. We're going to get 3g of t squared times g prime of t plus g prime of t equals 1. And so factoring out the g prime of t and then dividing, we get 1 over, a g prime of t is 1 over 3 g of t squared plus 1. g of t, again, is a real number. So when you square it, it's going to be non-negative. And if you add 1, it's going to be positive. So we've got 1 divided by a positive number. That's always going to be positive. Great. So now we want to evaluate the integral from 0 to 2 of g of t dt. Well, we're just going to use this result from part 0. We're going to replace f with g. And I guess the few things we need to know is what's the inverse of g and what's our x value going to be? Well, our x value is going to be 2. So this thing here is going to become the integral from 0 to 2 of g of t dt. Um, what is our f inverse, or in this case, g inverse? Well, since g, g of t q plus g of t is t, we know that the inverse of g must simply be t cubed plus t. So like this part here, essentially just swapping the t's with g of t's. Um, or sorry, t's with g inverse of t's. Okay, great. So g inverse of t is t cubed plus t. So then this integral here is going to become, um, so in fact, let me just write this out. So I get the integral from 0 to 2 of g of t dt plus the integral from 0 to f of 2 or g of 2. Uh, what would g of 2 be? 
um, g of 2. Well, we need to work that out. So g of 2 cubed plus g of 2 equals 2, according to this equation here. And now, well, how do we work out what g of 2 is? Well, you can see an obvious solution here is g of 2 equals 1, but maybe there could be another value. But thankfully, there isn't. If we consider the equation u cubed plus u minus 2 equals 0, conveniently, u minus 1 is a factor, and then it's u squared plus u plus 2 equals 0, and that has no real solutions, or, you know, the discriminant is negative there. So the only real solution there is u equals 1, so we know that g of 2 must be 1. So it, doing the integral from 0 to 1, of f inverse or g inverse of y dy so that's going to be y cubed plus y dy uh, equals x times f of x or in this case two times g of two so two times one like so and now we can just work out what this integral is it's a pretty straightforward integral two times one is two and then we can rearrange this to work out this and if you do this you get that the integral from naught to two of g of t dt is five over four Amazing. Let's now look at the final part. So the final part here requires a really cool trick. We have a very similar equation as we did in part one, except now h of t, we've got this plus two on the end here. And we want to integral, evaluate the integral from naught to eight of h of t dt. Okay, how do we do this? Well, we, we need to make um, a very nice observation here. We're going to do a little substitution. Uh, we want to basically use our result from part one. Uh, and that's kind of clear because these equations are so similar. Um, and the way we're going to do that is by just saying let g of t equal, uh, sorry, g of t plus 2 equal h of t. And so therefore this equation here just becomes g of t plus 2 cubed plus g of t plus 2 equals, uh, sorry, t plus 2, like so. And since this is true for all values of t, in particular, it's true if I kind of subtract 2 from these t values. So I get g of t cubed plus g of t equals t for all t. So all of these for all real t. Great. OK. And now this just becomes the equation we had before. We know how to deal with that. So the integral from 0 to 8 of h of t dt, well, that's just the integral from 0 to 8 of g of t plus 2 dt. And now if we just do a u substitution and replace t plus 2 with u, uh, we're going to get the integral from 2 to 10 of g of t dt. And now this is we want to use this, this fact here that the integrals want to start from 0. So it's going to be the integral from 0 to 10 of g of t dt minus the integral from 0 to 10, uh, 0 to 2, sorry, of g of t dt, like so. And now we just have two integrals to calculate, and we're going to calculate the exact, them the exact same way we did in part one. So in fact, this one here we already know is 5 over 4, and now we just need to work out this one. I'll leave this to you as, a, as an exercise just to verify, but once you work this out, in total, once you subtract these two integrals, you get 12 and 3 quarters. And that there would be the final answer for part two. A really interesting question and shows how you can integrate some functions based on their inverse, provided they meet some relatively mild conditions. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.